fellow biology lovers, to uh, the uh, American School of Rio's uh, presentation on biodiversity and ecosystem loss. This is Andy, this is Vin, Sebastian, Pietro, uh, Polinsky, and uh, I'm Alexander. Now, I have a question for you guys. Uh, okay, what is biodiversity? This is where you win the candy. <laughs> okay. Um, it is when a certain area has a variety of different animals and plant species. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 but why is it important? Why is it important? Why is it important? Um, because like it is not only the quantity of animals but the variety, and it it helps that ecosystem. That's the key word. So she wins. She wins. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> You answer questions correctly, you get candy. <laughs> what so, biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Basically, biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth. It includes plant and animal species, and uh, this includes about 5,500 mammal species, 10,000 bird species, and 40,000 fish species. It also includes around 5 million insect species. And uh, scientists believe that in total there are uh, about 13 million plants and insect and uh, animal species, but not all of them discovered yet. Uh, biodiversity, the loss of biodiversity is a crucial problem because uh, lack of species leads to unstable ecosystems, and uh, this disrupts the circle of life. And uh, the circle of life is something we as humans depend on every day for uh, things such as medicine, shelter, and food. And so the loss of biodiversity could prove fatal to humankind. Short video explaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> biodiversity represents everything that lives on Earth. It is the fruit of billions of years of evolution, shaped by natural processes and increasingly by the influence of humans. So far, about 1.75 million species have been identified, but scientists believe there could be 13 million species living on our planet. Biodiversity is life. It heals us, as more than 70,000 plant and tree species on Earth are used in medicine. It gives us shelter. Without wood, we couldn't build houses, furniture, or tools. Biodiversity feeds us and clothes us. The consumption patterns of people in rich countries are the principal cause of biodiversity loss. The rapid loss of the Earth's species is estimated to be between 1,000 and 10,000 times higher than the natural extinction rate. Today, our planet hosts 7 billion people. We need to preserve biodiversity so that it can meet the needs of 9 billion of us in 2000. And if you couldn't tell, that was my voice. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to now we're going to ecosystem loss. Uh, the ecosystem is the uh, interaction between between living organisms and and uh, the and the environment that they live on. Okay, so ecosystem loss. Uh, ecosystem loss is extremely um, detrimental to human life. Uh, the destruction of the natural habitats through e ecosystem loss. Uh, not only kills off many animal species, but also plant species, which are crucial for human life as we live it. Uh, we'd have to drastically change the way we live if all these species were to come ex become extinct in the near future. Uh, this inability to support life creates this lack of equilibrium, and that will deteriorate the quality of the soil in forests, the, the abilities of the plants to provide their healing or their nourish nutritional value, to humans, and uh, this will create uh, very big problems for us. Okay, so why is it a problem? Uh, humans depend on the ecosystem for various resources that are crucial to life. Clean air, clean water, clean soil, abundance of food resources, stable weather and climate are all vital parts of the way we live. Uh, ecosystem loss is more and more contributing to each of these, and uh, eventually these will all um, go down significantly, and as we saw in the video, the rapid increase in human population uh, demands a lot more of these resources, and at the current rate that we're consuming them, uh, it's just going to be unachievable to maintain that same amount of resources to sustain that many people on this planet. 
uh, examples of ecosystem loss, uh, deforestation, deforestation uh, destruction of coral reefs, and pollution in the air and ocean are all examples of how we're deteriorating our ecosystems. Great, so now that you guys know why ecosystem loss is a problem for us, uh, we want to show you guys some causes. We've separated these into two different categories, the first being natural causes, which we have no control over, and the second being over uh, being human causes. So these are the natural causes. I'm just going to skim over these because they're not relevant to our problem right now. Uh, these include continental drift, volcanic activity, Earth's tilt, ocean currents, and methane secretion. The human causes are represented in a cycle, which is the overconsumption of resources that leads to loss of habitat, which leads to extinction. This happens because the overconsumption of resources basically means that our planet does not have enough resources for 7 billion people, let alone all the species that inhabit it. We are extremely greedy human beings, and we take more than what we actually need. So this leaves the animals and the other species inhabiting the planet with us, without their habitat, which then makes them more prone to extinction. All right, so there's several large-scale solutions that we can implement in this world to um, stop biodiversity and ecosystem loss. Um, for biodiversity, we think that the best solutions are um, creating national parks to um, basically leave animals in space to live, zoological breeding for endangered animals, reintroduction to the wild, um, a couple of examples would be um, pandas to China or um, wolves and other animals that have been hunted to extinction in Europe. And something that goes with reintroduction to the wild is animal tracking, which lets scientists basically see um, how animals are doing in the wild so they can survive and adapt to their environment. And there are around 8,000 um, 8, national parks and preserved areas, which amount to up to 1.5% of the Earth's surface. But for ecosystem loss, um, universal loss control and deforestation would be useless because Loss um, about deforestation in Brazil would be different than loss in, in any other country in the world because there's different government, different culture, different um, ways of stopping it. But, um, there's, four, it there's four basic rules that governments can implement in a national and local, in a local community. Um, the first one is con considering the many irreplaceable ecosystem services. Since, as said before, um, ecosystems provide us with food, with air, with water, with shelter, with basically everything we need. The second rule is protecting remaining, uh, remaining intact sections of the natural habitat because they, these, if, um, if the natural habitat is destroyed, then they won't provide us with these necessities anymore and we would die. Third rule is educating the public about the importance of natural habitat because if the public knows that, um, about the importance of, bio, of ecosystems to us, then they will stop um, using, basically um, destroying it, and they can change other people's perspectives about it too. The last rule is finding ways to increase agricultural output and keeping the area the same because um, the main cause of ecosystem loss is destruction due to, um, need to, due to the need of agricultural land. If we find a way to increase increase the output and keep the land area the same will be um, will definitely reduce ecosystem loss. Uh, I have a question for you then. What are the consequent what do you think are the consequences of inappropriate waste disposal? Yeah. Well, I, if you like just dispose of the waste and like some random place and lots of uh, gases will like emit and then they'll just our ozone layer up there and then more species will die because they can't adapt. And also feel like they are waste. Do you guys think that's good? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys agree? Yes. 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 No? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. No candy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Woo! Round of applause, guys. Woo! Okay, so the reason why we're talking about waste disposal goes back to the other slide that I uh, <coughs> mentioned overconsumption. This is because not only are we taking from the earth, but also what we're not using, we're just leaving there without properly disposing of it. This has several consequences. The first being that it produces leachate. Leachate is a mix of organic and inorganic runoff. And this is a problem because it pollutes the water and it kills the organisms within it. Also, it emits CO2 and methane from the rotting materials, which then destroys the ozone. 
And lastly, the greenhouse gases, which cause a change in temperature, as we all know from global warming. And even the slightest change will completely throw off an entire ecosystem. So you were right. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Now this is crucial to our presentation. Does anybody know what permaculture is? <laughs> no hey, come on, guys. No, don't be worried, guys. Yeah? Wait, we got one in there. It's, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it in the right words, but when you use worms to like, cultivate the soil. So now you guys understand why we're giving away gummy worms? Uh, 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 here you go. Throw it to I'll pass it. I'll pass it. <laughs> That's why it doesn't fit us. <laughs> okay, so, vermiculture. Um, vermiculture, like she said, is basically the idea of composting organic waste through worm bins. A worm bin is basically an area of dirt with earthworms in it. And our plan in our school is to implement this to create a garden. So, we would take the cafeteria's organic waste, which we all like create from leftovers from food, throwing it away, things like that. We have a seven by eight area of unused land that the school has cleared for us to dedicate to this project. Now, with this we can plant fruits, vegetables, things like that, using the soil that we compost. And apart from having this biological aspect, there's also an educational aspect. All classes from all grades will be able to participate in this. Science classes could come down and they could do their experiments there. It could also be a social area for people to come down and have a snack in our garden. Now, why worms? Why worms? Well, inside, in our ecosystem, there are so many things that contribute to decomposition. But, Worms are easy. Worms are easy to access. And they can eat half their body weight in just a day. For a grown adult male, that would be 33 kilos of organic waste. It's pretty gross. <laughs> so, uh, also, uh, it decomposes waste to create this natural fertilizer. It's, mineral, it's mineral rich and it allows plants to grow. This is a non-organic process that I'm not proud of that is currently going on in our school. So first, here at cafeteria, we all produce the organic waste. It is put into trash cans, thrown away by students, um, taken away by trash trucks, put into a landfill. This creates leachate, CO2, methane, things we talked about earlier. Now, this is the process we're trying to promote in our school. An organic cycle. From the ERJ cafeteria, we take this organic waste, put it into the worm bins. This, uh, in around, depends how much, depends um, how big the worm bin is. In about 48 hours, uh, we could take that soil and put it into our garden. With that, we could plant all the, we could plant a different variety of plants. Now, what, why, why do we want to make this change? What is the impact on our school? Basically, it's free and it's simple. The school spends a lot of money on these trash trucks that take it from the school to the landfills. Also, the workers that separate the trash. But this project is completely voluntary. It's part of our school eco club. And it reduces our school trash. We have a really big carbon footprint in our school that we're trying to reduce significantly. And this would take away all of that carbon, all of it, all of the, all of it created through organic waste. Also, it's a great fertilizer for our environment, with creating the garden and the social area. Impact in our world. If every one of you were to take this idea and put it into your school, this is what probably would happen. It minimizes the use of chemicals. Since this is a human-controlled environment, there would, be, there would be no use of pesticides, things like that. They're not necessary. Also cuts down on global warming gases, since all this organic waste is not being burned or decomposed. Then it would be less trash in landfills, because 72% of landfill waste is completely compostable. All that just laying there to rot. Also, nutrients would be added to our soil in the area that we're composting it. And, just as a side note, uh, worms create burrows that need root expansion. It lets plants grow a lot easier and a lot faster also. This would also allow us to plant some plants that wouldn't grow as well in the certain, in the real climate. Now, we have a short video that we're trying to base our project off of. In order to 
order to engage the kid in some positive relationship with food, you need to get them into the garden growing it, get them into the kitchen, help you to cook it, and then they all want to eat it. In 1995, Alice Waters of Shake Me's Restaurant had the idea of a high school year in Berkeley. And she worked with the school principal to start a one acre organic garden and kitchen classroom at Martin Luther King Community School. We're teaching students about cooking and we're teaching them about working together and why it's important to make healthier choices. We're giving them skills for life. Really like textures. It makes it feel better to have something that's fresher and newer so you know where it comes from. Why don't you go on to the phone and add water to this pond? But it really is transformative for a young person to come in and do real work in order to grow food. And students take a lot of pride and ownership in being involved in that process. We're going to put the test how the Egyptians may have moved the large stones that they used to build the pyramids. The lessons in the garden and kitchen are connected to the science and humanities classes. They can come out into the garden and see those topics come to life in a hands on and experiential way. Mm -hmm. When we're studying organisms and reproduction in general in cells, this does give the students an opportunity to come out here and experience that in a, a slightly different way with bees and how they reproduce. Mm -hmm. So what does our project have to do with this issue? So basically what we're trying to do is reintegrate bio-waste into the organic cycle to allow us to increase biodiversity in a controlled manner. So essentially we're making like a, a small ecosystem in that, in that area that he said, uh, talked about before uh, on our campus. So like usually when you guys think about ecosystems, sure. you, you think about like uh, the Amazon rainforest or something like that, something big, you know, 30 foot tall trees or whatever, you know, but it can really, it can be as small as like your grandma's garden or something like that, you know? And uh, actually recently on Thursday, I believe, we took a trip to an organic garden. What was it called again? Um, Granja Integral Pachamama. Granja Integral Pachamama. Something like that, you know? And uh, well, when we went there, we, uh, we trimmed down the trees, we trimmed off the branches, because they, they were covering the sun for the, for the other plants that were growing, so instead of just throwing away these branches in the who knows where, you know. Instead we uh, composted them and then we separated the leaves from the branches uh, and the branches 
and put them in two separate piles so they could compost. And like, she was telling us how 14 years ago, I think it was, that all that soil was just like really super bad, you know, like you couldn't grow any, anything. But then through composting, you know, consistency, doing it all the time, you know, then now it like, when we went there on Thursday, it was beautiful, you know, it was great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Smart questions are awarded. Really <laughs> smart questions. Don't worry. Um, I have a question. 